Okay, so you, you won them all so far. Um, how many games is it going to take you to beat Jacob then? I'm going to go with the consistency of my matches. I typically win in five games. You typically win in five. All right, so you typically win in five. Good luck to you. I wish you the best. Um, all right, Jacob, so you heard heard his story. Tell, tell me, tell us yours. Well, my story was not like his at all. I lost three out of my first four matches. Um, two of them were in game seven in the field ball in the 10th. <laughs> so max line is just never a good thing. <laughs> but uh, I was able to avenge two of those losses, uh, Patrick Kiefer to get the belt, and then Jason Red to uh, to get here. Yeah. So Jake, uh, Jason was your first defense, right? Uh, yes. Right. Um, how many games is going to take you to uh, win this? Uh, man, look, I'm just wanting to win. So six games, six games looks pretty good. He's, he's a very good bowler, but I'm going to try to keep up my ball speed and stay in my lane. All right, all right. So, Jacob, Devin, I'm going to get your lanes cut on for practice. Good luck to both of you, all right? Cool, cool. All right, everybody, here we go. Practice underway here for this North versus South WCS heavyweight match. The winner of this match goes on to face Charles Withers, also known as Juice, for a shot at $1,000 tomorrow. So, Devin, currently uh, warming up on the right lane. He is our, is the Northeast champ. So, we got Jacob Johnson. So, he was the guy from Gladiators on the left lane. So, the teams for these guys. Uh, Jacob Johnson Jr. He's from Gladiators. He's actually the owner of Gladiators. Devin is from Impact. And, or Devin said in his uh, intro that he is uh, he's undefeated so far. So that's going to make uh, it very interesting for this match. Now both these gentlemen will still leave with their uh, respective titles regardless. Uh, the winner just gets the chance at the world title. 
and the thousand dollar payday that comes with that. So as we, as we talked about earlier when these gentlemen started, Jacob is calling in six. Devin's calling in five. Devin's had some go to seven. Jacob is not undefeated, but he's been on quite a run winning his last five to be, have the opportunity to bowl for the world title tomorrow. But he has to get through had to get through uh, the Northeast Rev Devon today. A kid can throw the ball. It's barely nice. Still got about four minutes of practice for these guys. Thank you for everybody joining us live today. for the first time watching the WCS match. You see these gentlemen got some nicknames on the back of their jerseys. Gusto is on the back of Jacob's jersey. And Ribbit Dev is on the back of Devin's jersey. Joined 
by uh, Mike Shaw going to be joining us on commentary here momentarily. We're checking out the uh, contraption you can't really see from uh, from the stream yet, but we got a camera that has uh, capabilities to do some zooming and some other stuff on some shots that we'll be able to you know add back in later. So should be fun. We're really looking forward to using that. We love having new technology to play with. That is for sure. So as you can see, um, Devin has uh, somebody helping him out a little bit with his, you know, what to throw, things like that. The gentleman that had injured reserve on the back of his jersey. And surprisingly, we uh, we do not have anybody from Gladiators here at the moment. And this is one of the centers that uh, the Gladiators Bowler Tour stops in. So we'll see how it uh, how it how it factors in their first tour stop of the season. Uh, was here. We are at Bolero Mechanicsville here in Virginia. If you're unfamiliar with the WCS process, it's a best of seven. The first one to win four games. First one to win four games wins. The total pinfall is completely irrelevant. As long as you win four games by one pin, you move on. First one to do that, does it. So you'll see sometimes where somebody will be locked out of a game. They'll uh, change balls, try a different look, see what they can do. They got about 30 seconds left here in practice. Devin's going to start us up. So Devin will throw the first frame, and then Jacob will ball two, and we'll keep having that rotation throughout the duration. Ooh, got a little, a little fast with that one. So early open here for Devin. So Jacob has a chance to get off to a good start here. That obviously was not the start that Devin wanted. Ooh. Four 
pin. Four pin for Jacob. All right, so I got an early spare there for Jacob, Mr. Gusto. Having some uh, mic issues, so we are down to one mic at the moment. So let's see what uh, Jacob does after following his spare. Oh, there you go. Got a strike for Jacob. So, so, so now we got some... Uh, some Gladiator fans behind me. Getting a little loud, I like it. Right. Devin has an early hole, early hole here. He's got to climb out of. Looks good. Ooh, no. Four, seven, ten for Devin. Might be a little bit of nerves on the North Champ. Uh, this is my first time watching him in person, so I can't really can't really share much on his demeanor. I know the, the North champs have had a lot of pressure. They have not had the world title in the North for a number of years. So there's definitely uh, definitely some pressure on, uh, on Devin. The back opens for Devin. We need him to mark here. Ooh, messenger tapped the 10 but did not knock it over. As you may have noticed, Devin is a motive staffer. got the spare so he got his first spare hopefully that'll help uh, settle the nerves and get him going Jacob looking for a double oh no oh big four four six seven ten Jacob, no time grabbing a different ball. Going for count. Ooh. Chopped that. It's one of those things you don't want to do there. You need, he needed to make sure he got at least the two. He chopped it. Hopefully those pins don't come back to bite him. Back on the lane, he struck one. Ooh. Felt a little fast. Got the two, four, five. This is uh, Devin's first frame after the spare. Nice strike. Nice strike from Devin. Now the pressure is all on Jacob. We've already had a had a swing already in the first after four frames. Jacob had the early lead after Devin had two opens, and that big four by Jacob in the third really uh, slowed him down. Yeah. 
So uh, as you've seen, we've had some re-rack issues on 55 here. And sometimes that can slow the pace down. I guess it, it bothers some bowlers more than others. It looks good. So that's uh, a double for the North. Jacob up quick, follows his spare with a strike. Oh no, that's not good for Jacob. 2-8-10. 2-8-10, very important he gets the wood here. Coming off that strike in the fifth, he needs the double wood count for sure. Got the wood. Playing with a little bit of our footwork camera here. Got two righties here. So we're trying to make sure that we uh, have the equipment out of their way and trying to get the best shots for you uh, that we possibly can. So. Uh oh, there's three in a row. Devin doing things. I like it. Has a huge advantage. Devin has a huge advantage here in game one after uh, looking rather rough the first two frames. Spare, three bagger. Let's make it four in a row. That seven fell late. All right, so Jacob, Jacob is almost locked out of game one here. So we'll see if we can. So yeah, Jacob's max, if he spares this, is only going to be a 202. It's a 248. 248 is the max for Devin here in game one. That looked really good, really good there from Jacob. I'm not sure if that was a, a ball change he needed or what he got going on there, but. Game one is definitely in Devin's favor. All he's got to do is uh, really not have a disastrous frame here in these final three. He should be uh, victorious in game one. And one game closer to facing Charles Withers tomorrow for that $1,000. I come from, that's a Cinco Seco. That's five in a row for Devin. So it's it's definitely 158 already on the board. As long as uh, Devin doesn't open here in the night, we will go ahead and call game one for Devin. going into the pocket, shot the head pin around the two and the four. So as long as he spares this up, he will win game one, regardless of what 
Jacob does here in the ninth and tenth. Punch out for a 202 and make Devin throw a good good shot here in the first ball in the tenth. But first things first, Jacob got a punch out. That looks good. Oh, almost left the five seven. Did click the five out, so it is just the seven pin standing. Devin doesn't even need to finish this game out. He will win game one. So the North will be up 1-0. That ball looked really good from Jacob there. Hopefully that's going to help him out going into game two because after the nice start and the very rough start for Devin in this game, Jacob screwed up. Two big opens off the splits. And Devin capitalized, threw a nice five in a row there in the middle. Sandwiched in between some spares. So we are... We are north, 1-0. And this is also where Devin can go ahead and start looking about transition and anything he might need to change up. Got a nice little high five from a gentleman from Impact. earlier, Total Wood is completely irrelevant in a WCS best of seven match. It's all about winning the games. And Devin finished with a 216. Game one officially over. We will start game two momentarily. You should see Jacob up first on the left lane. These guys will rotate who starts over the course of these games, whether it's four, five, six, or what I would love to see a game seven. Ooh. Oh, five pin. So Threw that a little left. So the little discouraging part, discouraging part right here for Devin, I mean, excuse me, for Jacob, is he had some foot issues. There he went and got his brush out of his bag. He's going to scrape himself off after he spares this five pin here. Because it was very unorthodox for Jacob to miss left. But he sure did on that first shot. Devin can do here to start game two. Starting on the right lane, he finished on game one. Ooh, the five fell out a little late there, but it was good. I liked it. Nice strike from Devin. Devin on staff with Motive. He's also on staff with, uh, looks like, L1 Apparel. Devin's 
Devin looking to put that early pressure on Jacob. Getting a double up early. Ooh, he almost to 8 10. 10 fell out, 2 fell out. Just got the 8 pin left. He got a little, uh, a little wide of target. But got a good break there by the 2 and the 10 falling out. Fair for Devin. Jacob got to get right back on it here. Six pin lead. See him talking to himself a little bit there, just kind of. need that. Jacob's got to make sure he don't get so worked up where he does things like that. Back on it? Yes, he is. All right, so to start, we got spare open strike. Spare open strike from Jacob. Just walked back, back here past me. Uh, talking to himself, trying to calm his nerves. He talking to some of his people behind us. Hopefully getting uh, getting a little pointers, kind of get calmed down. Sometimes bowling with uh, with as much as on the line, just gotta kind of calm down. And, and we just okay. Our scoreboard flickered off there for on us for a second. Devin didn't notice that wasn't a distraction or anything for him. 6'10. Oh, now he chopped something. So both of these guys missing easy spares early. They gotta they gotta get back on it. Both guys have hit their brush a couple times. Trying to keep their footing uh footing how they like it. Strike, spare, open for Devin. Looks good. Came in light. Ah, oh, the messenger got over there, but did not take out the 10. So both of these guys, um, they get up quick. They get up quick, they get ready to go. And sometimes I think they're getting too quick, carried away. It's back to back opens for Devin. And that's reminiscent of the start he had in game one, but he was able to come back from and win. So Jacob here after a strike. Ooh, he obviously didn't like it from the start. Only left the four seven, easy spare. But these guys have both missed easy spares already. I think they're both moving fast. They're both uh, very fast paced. They're already ready to get their spare going as soon as they get their ball. Um, and I think they both need to take a breath. Just uh, step off for a second. After Devin's shots, he, he comes back and he sits down. Got a fan blowing there with him. Jacob walks behind the setup here with the cameras and where myself are at. And, uh, talk to some folks with this up after a mark uh, when I'm It's a pleasant walk behind me when he's uh, Coming off of a, a spare or a strike not so good when he's coming off of an open Here's another five pin shot And he got it so a very important spare for uh, for Jacob, who is uh, still in control here game two. 
Just gotta, just gotta, you know, keep Devin down. Devin's done that himself the last two frames. Let's see if he can get a strike here. Get right back into an interesting game two here. Ooh, beautiful shot. Left the nine pin. That was brutal. Beautiful shot. Left the nine. All right, Devin, don't flag this. If you flag this, it's going to be hard to come back from three straight opens. He spared it up quite nicely. Way to go, Devin. Very nice from Devin. So Devin is still trailing in this match. But Jacob can't just keep sparing. He's gonna get some strikes back on this board. Ooh, two pin. That ball just hit kinda, uh, just no real drive on that shot. He's a spare here. He's through five. He's up ten. But if he spares this, he'll be basically trailing again because Devin is working on a strike in the sixth. Both men can strike out from here for a 226. That looked really nice. That looked really nice from Jacob. See him, See him talking to himself a little bit coming back. Devin making a little comment about the little chant the gladiators got going on behind us now. Let's see if we can get back there near him and get a little bit a little bit of it on the audio here. Ooh, four pin from Devin. And just like that, he's trailing again. Very nice spare. Representing impact. Strike looked very, very good. So Devin's max is a 206. 206 is Devin's max. Jacob, 226. He sheets. Yeah, nice, nice strike there. Here in the let's go chance. from people that are not on gladiators back here. These people that are in, from his district uh, disturbing the peace. We're three in a row.
haven't got the strike. So. so like I said, Devin's at 206 for a max. 226 is still uh, Jacob's max. But Devin's in a nice spot where he can put all that pressure on Jacob and make sure that Jacob shows up in the 10th. See what Devin does here. Okay, so Devin looking pretty good here. Had some people yelling for that to push. It definitely pushed. I've noticed here in the 10th is Devin has slowed his shots down a little bit, made some very quality shots, finished this 206 of the last five strikes. And that'll be nice for him to roll into game three. strike on that first shot. My apologies on the map. Because Jacob's going to strike here for a 205. I missed it. 204. So after leading most of that game, he should, he uh, gave it up there in the 10th. And that was very good for Devin to persevere and throw that last five. In fact, he struck six of his last seven shots. Jacob just needed a strike in that first ball in the tent. Couldn't get it. So just like that, the North is up 2-0. That four pin was provided to you by Dark Cloud Services. If you absolutely positively need a Dark Cloud and you're asked very nicely to stand behind a bowler to leave a single pin so that they don't get a strike, that is called the Dark Cloud Services. Available in any bowling alley that you see, Gordon Pepper. Now back to Ray. Thanks, Gordon. I uh, did not need him to uh, be doing that to the South people. Money is money. Whoever asked me to stand behind somebody, if you'd like me to stand behind Mr. Dandridge, I can do that also. That is up to you, sir. Very nice, very nice. I, I, my services are mutual equal opportunity towards everybody, sir. I do not discriminate. So Gordon says he doesn't discriminate. I just want the uh, match to go seven, honestly. Uh, that's what I like to see. I like to see it, uh, you know, go back and forth. And anytime somebody, um, I don't really want to say that Jacob choked that away, but he, he, he kind of did that first ball in the 10th. And uh, yeah, he, he gave game two away, so. Um, see if we can get it all behind him. Oh, no. He threw that one way right. Lefty, one, two, eight, nine. 
move that nine for a little bit too. So it's going to make the spare here a little bit more challenging than it normally is. Looks good. Very nice. Gordon Pepper has been known as the Dark Cloud. The bad luck charm. You don't want him to uh, be going against you, that is for sure. I don't believe in all that Dark Clouds nonsense, but Gordon does, it makes him feel warm and fuzzy, so we'll, we'll run with that. Six ten spared very nicely by Devin. Beautiful shot from Devin right there. So Devin has definitely slowed down a little bit like he did the end of game two. He's starting a little bit slower here in game three. Ah, Jacob went high. Left the six pin. These guys are both just going to make sure they don't open. Wait for the other to make a mistake, and Jacob did that right there. Ran right by the six. He's closer to making a five, and then he was a six there. three pins at it, but could not get the 10 pin out. He does spare this one. Devin, he's on an early 280 pace through four. He slowed down. He finished uh, six of seven, the last one, and has thrown four or five strikes this game. And unfortunately, Jacob's looking a little lost at the moment. Spared the 610, very nice. I think Jacob just has to slow down. Hopefully somebody on his his, uh, his his camp will tell him, slow down a little bit, you're moving way too fast. Uh, flat 10.
spare is made. So the max score is 221. Two, 221 for Devin. 221 for Devin. But two A, uh, but I'm sorry. 221 for Jacob. 280 for Devin. But he needs this one first. Four pin. spare from Devin. So his his max is now 259. So he's still well in control of this match. He just needs to make sure that you know he he does what Jacob couldn't do last time. Kick him while he's down. Keep him down this game. And he's in he's uh He's focused. He got that strike. That looked really good. Jacob's got to start striking. If he don't start striking, we're good. he's going to give away this third game. And it's going to be 3-0 for the North, who have not had the world championship in five or six years. Got to get the rest. He's got to get the rest. Put that pressure on Devin. If he can't put the pressure on Devin, we, we might be in the, working towards more of a sweep and not even make it to the five games that Devin said. Oh, he, those pins are flying back with extra force. Looking really, really good. Just got to keep that rolling. strike here he's gonna all but close it out here for game three strike here will put him basically at 199 Jacob has to be hoping that that doesn't happen right there it did God, I hate it for him. Jacob had picked this to go six. But unfortunately, best he can hope for is seven. Unless he strikes out and Devin chokes in a tenth. Or mightily struggles how Jacob did in game two. He is throwing it angry. He is he is pounding that ball in there. And it's very reminiscent of how Devin finished game two, where Devin was getting cut pretty early and did a good job of uh, rebounding. And this time, Jacob's the guy going to make Devin show up in the tent. Devin still could punch for a 259. Jacob's on 211 plus this ball, so. Let's see how these guys finish. I don't know if he's gonna come back 
back and win game three. I'll tell you what, my money would be on Jacob in game four. He is like, looks like a man possessed. He walked by me right there, focused. He's, he's ready, just hopefully it's not too late for him. That clinches game three. Game three is... Game three is going to Devin. So the North is going to be up 3 0. 3 0. This is the closest the North has been to having a shot at the world title in quite some time. Right where he left off at the end of game three. Jacob is smacking the mess out of that pocket. Starting off game four here with a strike. So we'll see what, uh, how Devin responds here early. Coming up, it's his first shot here in game four. You know, we could be setting a record here, but for all the wrong reasons. The shortest North versus South match was a 4-0 sweep in 55 minutes. We are not at the 40-minute mark yet. If Charles happens to do what he does the first three games, uh, I'm going to go out and get a burger, maybe do an escape room somewhere, because I'll be out of here an hour and a half earlier than what I thought it was going to be. As much as going to an escape room sounds like fun, I still want this to go you seven. Know, if we will do an escape room together, it'll be fun. Yeah, we can do it. But hopefully it's after seven, though. I, you know, I like game sevens. I want uh, this to go on. I love game sevens, but if, if your guy has any chance to do anything, you're right. You're going to need a game seven. Well, the, the way he finished uh, game three was similar to how Devin finished game two. So we'll see if uh, Jacob can keep it going, but he, he can't miss anything again. He's got to he's got to put all the pressure back on Devin, and, and he just hasn't been able to do that yet. Well, yeah, it's one of the things that I've said. The margin of error is zero, and in the words of former, I thought he was going to be here if he won two more matches. World Northeast Heavyweight Champion John Dansbury, El Chipo. But you're absolutely right. He's got to force Devin to make a mistake. Devin is very comfortable, way too comfortable right now. You cannot have him. Right now he's in the zone. You've got to do something to have him make a mistake, maybe leave a corner pin. Well, he needs to make a mistake, not your guy. Your guy doing that, no good. Yeah, you can't you, you, you can't do that. And the, part of what worries me is that anytime that it's been a small hiccup for, for Jacob, he's making it a bigger hiccup by missing these. And you can't miss single pins on, you know, oh, no, not, nothing not, in this level. Absolutely not. Not in this level, not in this area. Well, I thought he was going to miss that one. So, yeah, I mean, Jacob made the spare. And, you know, I think part of it's nerves, a little bit of the yips. It's the first time you're on this stage because, again, you got the belt this late in the process. 
you know, good for him for getting it. However, and a big however here, this is not necessarily what you want in your first match. Hey, I've got the belt. Oh, wait, here, here comes Devin. I got my shot at the world title. And now I've got to go after this guy who, again, has been mutilating everybody in the Northeast. So it's like, this isn't anything new for Devin. He's been doing this to everybody. And yeah. he's going to continue this right now, it looks like. Yeah, Devin, uh, he told me in the interviews when we started that he hasn't lost yet. And Jacob's, uh, Jacob lost some early and, you know, had to put on a nice run to, to make it to this part. But, you know, when you're going against a guy that's never lost the WCS match, that's a little intimidating. Not only has he never lost a WCS match, I think the most that he's lost in a game, I think, is two. So he's never, he's lost two games, not, not any matches. The most that he's lost is two games. So he's never even been any chance that he can, that he can beat a spot to lose a match. I mean, that's impressive. Well, the thing is, too, is if he if he does sweep Jacob, it, he'll, he won't even get to his prediction. He predicted he would win in five. Well, he's going to try to better his own prediction. And right now, whoa, four in a row. And again, he can't play defense when he's doing that. That basically, for Jacob right now, that four pin's got to be his only mistake that he leaves right. in this game, or else this match is going to be over. Yeah, and it's in the sad part, this is almost a home crossed over nice there. Um, He's trying to talk his nerves down, but he's moving too fast. He needs to slow down. Devin was moving really fast to get started, and Devin finally slowed down there in game two and was able to win game two unexpectedly because all Jacob had to do was strike the first ball in the tenth and couldn't do it. But th this is a this is a home match for Jacob. Like his 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 district bowls here. Their first tour stop of the season was in this house, and well, his and district was hanging out here in game one. His district was yapping, and then. Once he left the four pin, district going away, and you could just, even at that point, you can feel the tide turning, and I'm just sitting there like, oh no, like, what's going on here? Yep. And he needs to just hold, he needs to get it to where he can hold on and, um, you know, make it competitive here again, for sure, because, you know, I've been parts of in the past where matches have turned around and done really well. Um, it's like, got a guy wanting to, wanting to talk to Gordon, and... <laughs> Not realizing we're. He'll, he'll talk to me around, in around 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, and it might be because we're breaking between game four and game five, or it's going to be because this match is over and I'm going to set up an escape room for me and Ray to do. Somewhere, somewhere around here. However, Jacob got what he needed, which is a leftover single pin that maybe a 10 pin? I can't, I can't see the angle on it. Looks like a 10 pin. I'll say 10 pin. Uh, it's a six. Or a six. Either way, it looks like he will, ooh, makes this very does. So right now we're tied, going into the second half of game four. This is a game Jacob absolutely has to win because he hasn't won any of them yet. Yeah, be, being down 3-0 at this level is not good. And uh, he's got to make sure that he recovers and responds. That was one of the UBA staffers, uh, Gordon Pepper, kind of swinging by, sharing some of his knowledge. And then he kind of got pulled away. And so that distraction is gone. Oh, ringing 10. That's the opening. That's the opening right there that Jacob needed. Nice spare by Devin. So Jacob needs to strike here and get right back in the in the hunt here for this game. Oh, Jacob absolutely needs to strike here. Strike here all of a sudden, and for the second time in this match, because I thought Jacob should have had game one. Uh, he can put some pressure on Devin right now. Here's that first shot. That oh, yeah, yeah. oh my goodness. Well, and all the pins went down. That's good. Yeah, well, we, from from our angle, from our angle, we'll we'll, we'll try to say it was a flush West pocket West strike, but it wasn't. It was. It was a West Virginia strike. West Virginia. We'll go West Virginia because that wasn't even. I think that people in Jersey would be offended if we even uh, talked wasn't. about it like it's that. It's worse than one of my cross hits. My cross hits are pretty pathetically bad. That one looks better in the pocket. Ooh, that looks nice. One row. Yeah. Much better on the right lane. The right lane, he said the pocket, both the the right, the correct pocket. Um, 
on the left lane the last two times, and he's went Brooklyn the last two times on the right lane. So he needs to figure that out and get through this game and, and make get to a game five. Well, here's what he's hoping for. He's really hoping that Devin throws a couple more spares because then at least he can afford to figure out in lane eight what the heck he's doing I'm so, on, in frame eight, not lane eight. On, in frame eight, not lane eight, obviously they're on lane 55 and 56. But on frame eight, he has a chance to figure out what he's doing. If Devin goes out the door to 268, and what that means is that Jacob's got to keep striking if he throws another strike here. If Devin doesn't throw a strike here, it at least gives Jacob a little bit of cushion that he can afford to try to switch out and change something. If he throws a strike, that ball in 56 has got to be a strike, and all of a sudden it's like, uh-oh, what the heck am I doing now? Yeah, I know. I've been in that spot before where, like, I, I was I, I crossed over back-to-back -back frames before, and it, because of where I was in the match, I didn't want to change. I just kept going Brooklyn until I got through the game and could afford to try to figure it out. Because the last thing Absolutely. you want to do is last thing you want to do is force yourself to figure it out, and then before you know it, you go through the nose, yep. you five count, something just goes completely wrong. And, and, so, and, and here we go. Here, here's the pressure that we're talking about going to the eighth frame. But I, I'm actually with you. If I am Jacob, as dumb as this sounds, and it sounds pretty dumb, I'm going for the cross. I'm going for whatever the heck it is that I did to throw strikes here. And here's a shot. And he is not going to, oh, well, he didn't go for the cross. He buried it, and all the pins went down. Big shot for Jacob. He is still up as we go into the ninth frame. Yeah, because the thing for Jacob is Jacob needs to go ahead, and he needs to get this strike, and then let Devin think about it. If Devin wants to kind of concede the game, and decide if he wants to go ahead and, and see if there's any things he wants to try different preparing for game five. It's, all, it's only a 10-pin game. There's no way he's going to concede. So uh, right now, if he goes out the door, it's 279. If Devin goes out, it's 268. If Devin goes out, that forces Jacob to throw the first two. So there's no way in my mind that he's going to try to do anything different. He's, I'm, I'll guarantee you he's going to attempt to go out the door and force Jacob to shoot it. But I will agree with you. If he doesn't throw a strike in the ninth frame, Game is pretty much over, and then he starts figuring out what he's doing for game five. Which, for Jacob, is actually good because around 10 minutes ago, we weren't talking about a game five. No, we were we talking about an escape room. Yeah, we were talking about escape room. We were talking about setting records. And um, in game two, the pressure was, up, was, was on Jacob when he got up in the tent, and all he had to do was strike that first ball to close it out, and he couldn't do it. And it might be in that same spot here where he's got to get at least the first one, if not both depending on how Devin finishes up here in the tent. Yeah, well, and, and the difference is that first time that he needed it, that was only a game, that's fine. This time around, if he doesn't do it, that could be game, set, match. Now, again, nine spare strike, if my math is correct. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Actually, no, he's got to throw a strike. Nine spare, the game's over. That is assuming, of course, that Devin throws one right here in the 10th frame. Here's that shot here. That ball looks good. It is not 10 pin. Now, there is the cushion that we were talking about. That is a big non-strike. The best Devin can do is a 247. And that means that uh, Jacob does not need a mark. He just needs to go to count. Yeah, he, he doesn't need to 4-6 uh, or Greek church or nothing crazy. Yeah, no, nothing the, goofy. And the good part is he used the last time he was on the right lane, he was able to figure out what he did wrong when he crossed over twice. He buried it last time. So now all he got to do is, you know, get us the game five and... Uh, and, and go from there. If Devin strikes here, James has got to get a mark. Because if he opens, if he opens, nine open will be 246, and he will lose by a pin if he strikes here. And he does. Jacob's got to get a mark. Got to get a mark. All right, let's see what we can do here. Any mark is good, any open, and I start looking at escape rooms. Fair enough, fair enough. I'm hoping, I'm hoping we go to game five. Game five you know, I don't mind game seven. Game sevens are fun. Well, I got to get to a game five first. Oh, there you got it. Am we going to get a game five? We're getting a five. So Devin's prediction still could come true that he wins in five. That's true. That's true. So, you know, one of the things that I was talking about, I'm going to make a shout out here because I have to shout out my niece, Sammy Barkin, who is going to be playing tomorrow in Regions on Tiffany. She auditioned, she made the Regions. And there's two Tiffany spots. You can play Tiffany for the band and Tiffany for the orchestra. And it almost looks like that you have two 
master craftsmen that are good at their craft. Because again, when it's Tiffany, there's only room for one Tiffany player. So it's almost like you have one player for the wind ensemble, one player for the orchestra, and they're going up against each other to try to go up against the super Tiffanist. Which is, of course, being the title being held by one Charles Withers, a.k.a. Juice. And that whoever wins, that is going to be a fun match tomorrow. Yes, it, it, it'll definitely be a fun match because Juice has been phenomenal uh, since he took over from the champ a year ago. Um, he beat uh, Jerry Didway here for the Snakeskin World Title. Mm -hmm. uh, very nice world title belt that he's, he's in possession of. And um, there's going to be a there's going to be a nice story to whoever he gets to compete against. Either the South is going to retain again if um, Jacob can get there. Or Devin will continue his undefeated streak in WCS and see if he can bring the world title back to the North that hasn't had it in forever. Couple years. Yeah, a couple of years. And, ooh, well, let's see. Devin's not going out of the gate now. He's he's left it on strike. This is a chance for Jacob to come in and start shooting. Yep. Jacob, Jacob's looked pretty good with his shots. Um, well, he's finally looked pretty good with yeah. his shots. Game four. He finally woke up a little bit. Now you can make an argument that it should be two two all and not and not three to one Devin at this point. You wouldn't necessarily be wrong with that, but you gotta finish. Uh, he finished that time, so that's why he's on the board. However, again, he can't lose a game. There's three games left, he's gotta win them all. He's gotta win the next two for your two favorite words, which will be game seven. So Devin's favorite words right now is gonna be game over, which he wants to try to hear in game five or game six. And, and, the, and the interesting part is, you know, I, I kind of feel like Jacob lost game three because of the heartbreak of game two. Because I think it takes time to get it out of your system to kind of flush it out that, like, I should, I should be tied 1-1. I'm down 2-0. OMG. How I got to figure this out. And he's come back and smacked the mess out of those pins uh, to start game uh, five here. So... And, and you have to, you need to have a short memory yeah. because this is only seven games. You must have a short memory. If you don't, you're going to have a long memory after the match when you get stomped on because you couldn't recover. Absolutely. Who was the last North uh, champ uh, to have the world title? <laughs> well, once upon a time, there was someone. <laughs> I mean, you no, know, it's funny because um, once upon a time, you actually had to have a round robin match in the north for competing against the south because we had an ad, uh, abdication. So the last person from the north to have a shot at the title, I think that's where you're trying to come from, was from South Jersey Storm. His name was Tommy Johnson. And he got annihilated by Matt Taylor. And that is the first person that held on to the belt for the south. The whole title. So I was trying to go, I was trying to go backwards. Oh. Um, we've had Jerry Didway before Charles Withers. Then we had uh, Shaw, uh, Josh Pittman yep. in there. Then we had Dennis Kilo in there. Nick Christie in there. Did I skip somebody? Who was before Nick? Um, Miguel, the last person to officially, officially have the belt, because that's who Christie beat for the title, was uh, Miguel Acobo, El Tiburon Acobo. Tiburon, That's yep. when Chrissy okay. had the belt. But the first time that the South got the belt was Matt Taylor. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So, but yeah, Nick Christie is. Since Nick Christie held the belt, that belt has stayed in the South. It's changed hands from the South, but it's stayed in the South. Yep. Now, the question is can Devin win this match? And then if he does, can he be Chuck? However, before you get there, funny thing happened on the way at the end of game four because he didn't win game four, and now he's trailing again. He's only trailing by a little, but he is trailing right now to Jacob, who's doing a strike. However, one more strike by Devin, and he will take the lead. Yeah. If both rollers go out, it is 290-279 Devin, and he will advance to tomorrow's world title match. So I know we talked about the fastest world title match was a sweep. You said 55 minutes. Well, that, obviously that will not happen now. So, so that disaster has been averted. That that one's been averted. Um, has this been the biggest discrepancy in height you've seen between the two competitors? Uh, yeah. I, I don't even I don't even have to go into the memory books. Yeah. No, no memory book needed. Okay. No memory books needed. Because yeah. he's shorter than I am, and that says a lot right there. <laughs> that, that that says a lot. Because I'm I'm a good six seven inches taller than you standing here. 
you know, it, it's funny because, you know, when, when you, like, the first time I met Devin was today. Uh -huh. And so when I've seen the videos of, like, just him bowling, you know, TV, you know, you can say TV adds 10 pounds, all that kind of stuff. Well, it, it, it made it him look. five inches. It had five inches, too, I guess, because, like, I, I would never guess he was this short. Um, but, you but, know, he uses it for his advantage because, again, you're looking at somebody like that with that stature, and it's like, well, how can he be the champion? And then you see that, which is going to be four in a row, and there it is. You see that, and you realize, uh-oh, right. oh, bleep. You know, yeah. it's. Yeah, he, he, he can throw the ball. And that's, the, that's, oh, yeah. that's, what I, that's what I love about bowling is you can be skinny, you can be big-boned, you can be chunky, you can be tall, you can be short. You could be any race, anything, and you could be any kind of anything out there. Me. You could be you, and you could go out there and throw a ball down the lane, make the right adjustments, and win. That is true. However, Jacob did not make the right adjustment. There's seven pin, and even though there's only the half mark, halfway mark of game five, it looks like Devin found what he lost in the middle of game four, and this could spell trouble for Jacob. He will make the spare. However, and a big however here, he is potentially looking at a 30 to 40 pin deficit as we go into the second half of game five. And again, he's got to win this game. If he doesn't, escape from time. Yeah, I still feel like one of these guys is going to leave something big that's going to kind of clinch it for the other. Um, whether it's a split, you know, flagging a single pin. I feel like, I don't, I don't feel like he's going to go 290. Oh my, I thought that seven was going to go first. That was a mistake right there. Yeah, I thought the seven was going to fall first, and um, it, it did not. So I, I actually thought he had a strike there, and then I'm like, oh boy, there, there's your opening, there's Matt Dilber. Now again, he's on four in a row. I'll remind you about what happened in game two. If you want, you can send me over there. I can play, I, I can, you know, play equal opportunity if you want to send me behind Devin at this point. And then I'll get yelled at, but hey, it's if I'm going to stand behind one, I can stand behind the other one. Hey, Because right now you may need that. Well, let's, let's see what Devin does here. All right, so right now you don't want me to go, so I'm going to hang out right here. I, I, can't, I, can't afford, I can't afford you right now. <laughs> okay, fair enough. You can ask Jacob, you can ask Jacob uh, to get it out of his uh, first drink. Ooh, well, you didn't need me on that. That's a nine pin. Wow. Yeah, so that, that, that you know, it, it's, the match is going to go on. Um, it, looked, it looked there for a minute that Devin was going to kind of lock this out early, especially with just three strikes and three spares from Jacob. But, um, you know, hopefully Devin doesn't flag this. But if he does, we're basically all square again. All right. Now, assuming that he makes a spare, and he will. Devin is up by 21 pins as we go into the seventh frame. So Jacob's got to make up 21 pins. It also means that he's got to figure out how to carry nines. I will guarantee you if he throws four nine spares from seven through 10, this match is over. Absolutely. He absolutely has got to carry and figure something out. And he needs to do it very, very quickly. Uh, seventh frame coming up. And again, Devin's got to figure this out. This match, as you said, this match is not over. This game is not over. Jacob is certainly good enough to roll some together. So Devin cannot, I'm sure he's not assuming that all he has to do is stay clean. He's got to be aggressive on this. So he's got to still think about throwing strikes. And that would be one of them. Yeah, that, that was a very nice strike right there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Jacob's going to have to go. He's got, what, six opportunities for strikes left. He needs like five or six. He needs five or six, I think, to have a chance. I, I would say he's got to double here in the seventh and eighth because he's running out of frames. Seventh frame, I'd have to say he's got to have it. And that is definitely not a strike. That's a bucket. Yeah, and that's a trouble. Now we got impacts behind and body bags behind Devin, and they're starting to get loud. They're sensing the end may be nigh. That's the South champ. Ooh. That's Brandon Hall. Yeah, I've, I've never heard of him, so he's irrelevant. Uh, he's, he's a good cruiserweight. Uh, he's been there for a while in the World Championship Series match. But his point is correct that in three frames, you're going to have Jacob that's going to be irrelevant for tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, he that... won't be irrelevant in the future, but he may be irrelevant for tomorrow's match because he will not be a part of it. Eighth frame, again, <laughs> yeah, I agree with you on five out of six. He's real. If he didn't have that one, he's got to have that one, and he cannot afford to do what he just did. Yeah. That's another six, and unlike the first one that was gettable, this one may not be. And if he doesn't get it, this is, this is I love you, but bye Yeah, and Devin's prediction of uh, take going in five will come true. That is true. 
So maybe the conspiracy theorists would say that Devin threw one in on purpose. Oh, he makes a spare. Nice spare, nice spare. That is a beautiful spare. The best that Jacob could do is a 220. And if you go and if you look at Devin, the best he could do is a 269. Two strikes in the eighth and ninth frame, and then he will not need a mark in the tenth. And from at least mathematically, this game's over, and we can wrap this one up. Eighth frame here, big shot. Ooh, uh, a, oh, he almost returned the favor. It leaves a 3-6-10. Now, now keep in mind again, Jacob needed to throw strikes. Spares won't cut it. So assuming that he makes this, he'll still be up by around, actually he'll increase the lead because of the two sixes from 20 plus to 30. Around 30 pins with only two frames left. So Jacob really made it, needed to make have Devin make a very big mistake. That's not big enough. That is. Yeah, that, I was trying to let you finish. I was going to say that's very choppable. And um, yeah, so now Devin um, is 225. So I mean, he can still he can still strike out and, and shut him out. But um, you know, it, it, hey, if if it, well, it's Devin go out for 235, not a 225. So oh, get the first. Cute. That's okay. Right, right first in the ninth, third, and tenth game's over. So, but if Jacob goes out the door, Devin's got to find a double somewhere down the line, and he certainly can't find an open. And there is a big strike in the ninth frame. So here's the situation: 15 pins, got a strike from Devin. Mathematically, Jacob really, and I mean really, needs to strike out. To force Devin to do anything, Jacob needs to double somewhere along the line. A double forces Devin to show up. Anything less than that, and this match is going to be over. Oh, oh my goodness. Wow. That, 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 wow. Yikes. So that How's pin is ball? It's still moving. Yeah, he should have had that one. Oh, now the game's over. Yeah, that's that's We're gonna wrap it. That was, you can tell the, you can't let those single pins get to you like that. Absolutely. Um, that, that's now the second game that he may have coughed up by doing that. Yeah, because I mean it was. I, I understand the frustration, but it's just Jacob's a fast-paced bowler. But there's so many times in this match where he needed to step off, take a breath, calm down, slow down. And I mean, nobody would have blamed him there if he would have wanted to sit down and take a nap because. That 10 pin was still wobbling when it got picked up, got, and it got put back down. It was still wobbling. Well, he got, he got so frustrated that he whiffed, and you're absolutely right. He got so frustrated that he whiffed, and we both said if he threw a double somewhere with the mark of the ninth, he could have forced Devin to do something. Now he's going to do 188. Devin's got a 185, so this one is done. But what if I'm Jacob, and I want to keep Jacob here for one second. If I'm Jacob, what I'm hoping for is that you picked up some stuff and that this, from an experience standpoint, will help you be a, will help you be a better bowler somewhere down here because you had your opportunities in this oh, match. Yeah. Look, I, had, I had a lot of different opportunities. I, like, I think it was a spot in game three, missed a, did a six pin or a nine pin, just got up there and rushed the shot. It's a lot of rush shots, really. 56 was difficult for me all day. It's just he was the first one to be able to figure it out and throw consistent shots. Even when I figured it out, I wasn't throwing it consistent. So, like, a well-deserved win. He threw the ball He threw the ball better than I did. He spared better than I did. That's how you win games. Yeah, one, one of the things that, that, um, that I noticed was both of you were going really, really fast, and, like, he was able to slow down. Like, he slowed down game two to where, you know, he still – he was kind of getting ready for game three, and then all you need to do is throw that first strike in the tenth, and you spared, and then so you, you kind of opened the door for him. But he had kind of he slowed down in game two, and it's like you were struggling to slow down. You were wanting to keep your normal fast pace because even on that ten pin, you deserved the strike. But the ten pin was wobbling so much, it the, the pin spotter picked it up and set it down, and it was still moving. So, um, you know, a lot of times, a lot of times, what you have to do is you you just have to moderate yourself. Yep. Like I really I got there and I threw the ball, I threw the ball fast and inconsistently. Like, fast is normal, but inconsistently, like, you can't win games like that. You can't win games. You can't pick up spares. You can't throw the ball consistently on the lane. Like, if if you're trying to win a game, you're trying to compete against somebody at this caliber, you really have to focus on every shot instead of trying to get ahead of it. You have to come back to the shot you're in and throw the shot. 
that you need to talk about. Uh, it was definitely, we definitely enjoyed watching you, man. It was a pleasure. <laughs> and, uh, and and good luck carrying forward in the South. And, and if if uh, Juice retains tomorrow, you know, a couple, couple months down the road, you get another shot at that world title. So the, I guess the biggest thing is, is like, you know, I really have to be able to just keep my emotions in check. Like there was a couple of times where uh, just I threw a bad shot, carried over a couple frames. Uh, 55, I figured it out pretty soon, pretty early on, I figured out 55. And it's just like, but one lane doesn't win a match. And so like, hopefully, hopefully within the next couple months, I could just, I can retain a few times, be able to uh, learn something from here. 56 was just difficult, be able to just be able to moderate speed, moderate different areas of the lane, yeah. maybe bring some different equipment, something a little weaker that'll get me a little further down the lane. and. Hopefully, hopefully next time, next time I meet up with somebody of this caliber, I'm able to uh, come out victorious. Well, like we said, it was a pleasure to have you, and we'll see you again, uh, hope again soon. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Now, Ray is accusing you of having a little conspiracy theory here, because you predicted what in terms of your match today? Five one me. I mean, well, it couldn't be five when you'll guarantee you that. <laughs> it now, but you said the game would end in five. It matched it end in five games. So Ray and I were chatting. Did you throw game four just so you could make it four to one? No, I did not. <laughs> but in all honesty, I told my friends in about the seventh frame, I'm like, I like myself to finish, but I actually like him to shoot 279 this game. But, uh, wait, he, he did he very did. well, yeah. So, but... Hey, I can't complain losing to a 267 game. You, you cannot, but you took all the other games, so congratulations okay. on that. What's your thoughts on these lanes? I know this is not your first time being here. Actually, but it is. How, uh, is it? Yeah. What I think? Okay, well, okay, it is your first time being here. Talk to me about it. So I saw very early that I had two completely different lanes. Right lane, it was throw it to the right and watch someone kick it. The left lane had a little bit of a push. So I ended up shelling up on the left lane, go a bigger cover, get through the oil. It just worked out until later in the games when they blended out for me. And just ball, completely balled down and was able to open up on both lanes. It looked like, obviously, at the end of game three, it, it looked like, in your mind, there was no way you were losing this match. But when did you realize, all right, I'm taking this one? After two games. After two. Yeah, one of, the, one of the things that like that I noticed early was both you and Jacob are fast-paced bowlers, but you were able to slow down, and he wasn't slowing down. And, you know, you were supposed to lose game two, really, if he would have just struck that first ball in the tenth. Mm -hmm. But you had went six of seven uh, strikes to finish the game. You had, you had slowed down. You slowed your feet down a little bit. You just had kind of took your time getting to lunch. Jacob never did that. Mm -hmm. And I really felt like that was something that, that was – the change of the game because I felt like Jacob lost game three because he should have won game two. And I think he like, ah, and it just took him time to like get back in it. But you did a great job. Did you did you slow down on purpose? Did you even realize you slowed down or like what? It was intentional. Was it intentional? Good, yeah. good. I saw that I was getting a little fast on a couple shots, especially on the left lane. So yeah. made the conscious effort, slow my feet, take my time, make sure I execute a good shot. Well, I'll, I'll carry on what Ray said because I'm, I'm going to add another point because he's, first of all, he's completely right in the speed. But the other thing that I'm going to add to it is emotion. You let the you let you carry the emotion. He let the emotion carry him. How much of that has been your experience in these spots with you holding on to the belt for the number of months that you've held on to the belt? Emotion plays a lot in a head-to-head -head match. My key is. If I can stay calm, have my highs, but never get too high. When I don't, when things don't go my way, hey, you lose one game, it's fine. That's why we bowl best of seven. Don't get too down, don't get too high. Stay in the moment, throw good shots. Typically when I do that, good things happen. So tomorrow, and this is the first time, because Ray was asking me this, this is the first time in a while that we actually have the North going up against the world title. Because the past couple of times it's been South Bowler, it's been, as you said, Didway, it's, it's been a bunch of other people. So, now, how much do you know about your opponent, Charles Withers? 
I know a little bit about him. I've had the pleasure, never been on a pair with him, but I've, my time's coming down south. I've been in the vicinity of him a few times, and I'm aware of who he is and what he can do. What's your thoughts on your match against him? I'm excited. That's what I came for. Right. That's what came cool for. You answered food. You did not say <laughs> juice. You didn't want to drink. You wanted food. You said food. You did not say juice. I said well, now tequila. He's, you can call that juice. Well, yeah, they added, oh, that's true. His, his, yes. his, his juice will drink some tequila. With mm -hmm. So now you're going from solids to liquids, apparently. You're done with the food. Now you want the juice. Oh, yeah. And whether or not you want it or not, you're going to be getting the juice. Fresh squeeze. <laughs> so, um... Any last thoughts, questions, shout outs, anything that you have? Uh, you know, got to shout out my brands, Motive, yep. L1 Apparel, yep. World Class Pro Shop, Impact, of course, and, you know, the North. That's what we're here for. Nice. Well, we have a motto about the North and the South that I can't really say on, uh, on here, but... Um, Congratulations on everything. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And um, yeah, do your thing, man. Make, 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 make the North proud, man. Make the North proud, for sure. Cool. Thank you, man. All right, that's us. We are out of here. We will talk to you all again tomorrow.